Well, the jury in the Michael Jackson wrongful death trial has been in court now for 65 days of testimony. They've heard from witnesses from both sides, the Jackson family and AEG Live Entertainment. And now the judge says the case could go on for another six weeks. So CNN digital entertainment correspondent Alan Duke joins us now from L.A. He's been following it all right there in the courtroom. I understand. Good morning to you. First of all, there was some emotional testimony of Michael Jackson's director and choreographer, Kenny Ortega. Yes, he actually started a month ago and had to go and uh, work and uh, uh, take a trip to China. Then he returned on uh, Thursday uh, to re complete his testimony. And it, too, was emotional, just like the first few days. It was so emotional that the jurors actually applauded Kenny Ortega as he left the stand at the end of the day Thursday. I've never seen that happen in a case. So this is wow. quite interesting. Some of the examples of the emotional things that he said, he was talking about seeing Michael Jackson in this fragile state. And I believe we've got the full quote here. I saw, my, I saw a Michael that frightened me, a Michael that was shivering and cold. I thought there was something emotional going on, deeply emotional, something physical going on. He seemed fragile. And uh, as I said, they applauded at the end of that testimony. And what impact it'll have on the jury is to be seen probably in late September when they deliberate. Extremely rare for a jury to do that. And the jurors also saw video, I understand, of Michael's young brother um, or younger brother, Randy, talking to lawyers from AEG Live. I want to play that for you and then get your take on the other side. They made me calls, but um, we, we were unsuccessful. So you actually tried to talk to your brother when he was living at Carrollwood? We tried to talk to my brother, people around him, things like that. And so you had a concern when he was at Carrollwood that there might be a drug issue? It was a drug issue, it wasn't eating, all these things were happening at the same time, and, you know, a lot of pressure, you know. And what was the basis for your belief at the time that you thought he might have a drug problem during the time he was living there? Well, which was, 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 was involved very much in the, in the shows and was giving reports to me that uh, he didn't look too good. Huh, there you go. So uh, what was the reaction to that? Well, this was videotaped testimony, deposition actually given in November, played for the jury. The defense, the AEG lawyers, called him as the witness, compelled Randy Jackson's testimony, where basically he said that six or seven times he and some other members of his family tried to intervene with Michael's drug use over about uh, less than a decade. Painkillers, the problem that they perceived. He'd get a call from the nanny saying, come help, Michael needs help and they would go. But Michael would never go into rehab, he said. Now, it's important to say that the Jackson lawyers don't dispute Michael Jackson had a dependency on painkillers. It's well documented. It is known. It's something Michael has acknowledged publicly. The question is, though, uh, were painkillers involved in this, uh, his death? It was propofol, a surgical anesthetic, and an apparent treatment for insomnia. And also, if it was so well known, why didn't AEG know it? That's really it. The question of what did AEG know mm -hmm. and what was their responsibility to do something about it in Michael's last weeks where the Jackson family claims the concert promoter was pressuring him, pressuring him to get rest, and that's what led to his death. That is the allegation. With the, will the jury buy that or not? We'll find out. And amazing that we may not know for another six weeks. All right, Alan Duke for us in Los Angeles. Alan, thanks.